Hi, I'm Pastor Steve of North Hollywood First United Methodist Church. Today I'm standing at St. John Fisher Catholic Church in Rancho Palos Verdes Estates, preparing you for a virtual Stations of the Cross as a part of our Holy Week activities. The Stations of the Cross are a series of 14 images which follow Jesus from his sentencing to death to when his remains are laid in his burial tomb. Usually, each station is arranged sequentially along a path, along which participants travel from image to image, stopping to contemplate the image, read the reflections, and offer the selected prayers. This unique act of prayer comes to us from the early church, and the stations can be found in Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, and Methodist churches, among others. And we will get started here in just a moment. But I wanted to say two things. In this virtual format, I will be encouraging you to pause the video in order to consider the image and the offered reflection. Please take advantage of this time to pause. This is a spiritual process, and the goal is to grow closer to Christ. And secondly, movement is an important part of the stations. Our travel along the way is meant to parallel Jesus' movement along the Via Dolorosa. So after each station, if you are able, please get up and walk around your room or your house before you start the next station. Our readings this morning are adapted from an online version shared by Vanderbilt University. And we offer our thanks and deepest gratitude to St. John Fisher Parish and their generous sharing of their stations. At the end of the video, we will include their website information and we encourage you to offer a small donation to their parish as a way of saying thanks. So without any further delay or instruction, let us begin our journey through the Stations of the Cross. Station one, Jesus is condemned to death. Here Jesus stands in the most human of places. He's already experienced profound solidarity with so many on earth by being beaten and tortured. Now he is wrongfully condemned to punishment by death. His commitment to entering our lives completely begins its final steps. He has said yes to God and placed his life in God's hands. And we follow him in this final surrender and contemplate with reverence each place along the way as he is broken and given for us. How willing am I to die to myself for the sake of God's will? Do I love myself more than God? As I view the scene, I become moved by both outrage and gratitude. I look at Jesus, his face, the crown of thorns, the blood, his clothes stuck to the wounds on his back. And Pilate washes his hands of the whole affair, while Jesus' hands are tied behind his back. This is for me, that I might be free and have eternal life. And as the journey begins, I ask to be with Jesus, to follow his journey, and I express my thanks and my love. I encourage you at this point to pause and to contemplate the image and thoughts. Let us pray. Lord, help me to be more open to your will. Give me the strength to obey you without counting the cost. Amen. Station two, Jesus takes up his cross. Jesus is made to carry the cross on which he will die. It represents the weight of all our crosses. What he must have felt as he first took it upon his shoulders. With each step, he enters more deeply into our human experience. He walks the path of human misery and suffering and experiences its crushing weight. I contemplate the wood of that cross. I imagine how heavy it is. I reflect upon all it means that Jesus is carrying it. And I look into his eyes. It's all there. 
This is for me. So I place myself with him in his journey, in its anguish, in his freedom and surrender, in the love that must fill his heart. He carries his cross even though he was innocent. And some of the crosses that I bear were not created by me either. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image. With sorrow and gratitude, I continue the journey. Moved by the power of his love, I am drawn to him and express my love in the words that come to me. Lord, you bore your cross so courageously and so faithfully. Help me to bear mine in the same spirit. Amen. Station three. Jesus falls for the first time. The weight is unbearable. Jesus collapses under the weight. How could he enter our lives completely without surrendering to the crushing weight of the life of so many on this earth? He lies on the ground, and he knows the experience of weakness beneath unfair burdens. He feels the powerlessness of wondering if he will ever be able to continue. He is pulled up and made to continue. I stare at the weakness in his eyes, and I look at his whole body, and I can see the exhaustion. As I behold him there on the ground, being roughly pulled up, I know forever how profoundly he understands my fatigue and my defeats. Do I recognize and accept my own human frailty? Jesus does this for me. In grief and gratitude, I want to let him remain there. But as I watch him stand again and gain an inner strength, I accept his love and express my thanks. I encourage you to pause at this point and to contemplate the image. Let us pray. Lord, give me the grace to accept the truth that I am weak and sinful. Help me to realize how dependent I am on you. Amen. Station four, Jesus meets his mother. Jesus' path takes him to a powerful source of his strength to continue. All of his life, his mother had taught him the meaning of the words, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. And now they look into each other's eyes. How pierced through her heart must be. How pained he must be to see her tears. Now her grace-filled smile blesses his mission and stirs his heart to its depth. Love and trust in God bind them together. As I watch them in this place along the way, I contemplate the mystery of love's power to give strength. She knows the sorrow felt by every mother who has lost a child to tragedy or violence. I look at the two of them very carefully and long for such love and peace. This is for me, an incredible freedom and the availability of a servant. I find the words to express what is in my heart. Do I love our Lord as deeply as his mother? I encourage you to pause at this point and to contemplate the image and the meditation. Let us pray. Lord, watching my loved ones suffer is harder to bear than my own pain. Help me to believe that you are there for me. Amen. Station five. Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. 
Jesus even experiences our struggle to receive help. He is made to experience the poverty of not being able to carry his burden alone. He enters into the experience of all who must depend upon others to survive. He is deprived of the satisfaction of carrying this burden on his own. Simon of Cyrene relieved the burden of the cross on our Lord. And it was a welcomed relief. Like Simon, do I want to relieve the burdens of others through my care and concern for them? I look into his face and I contemplate his struggle, his weariness, his fragility, his impotence. I see how he looks at Simon with utmost humility and gratitude. This is for me. So I feel anguish and gratitude. I express my thanks that he can continue this journey, that he has help, that he knows my inability to carry my burden alone. I say what is in my heart with deep feeling. I encourage you to stop at this point and contemplate the image and meditation. Let us pray. Lord, give me courage to always help anyone in need and to receive help when it is offered to me. Amen. Station 6. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Jesus' journey is at times brutal. He has entered into the terrible experiences of rejection and injustice. He has been whipped and beaten. His face shows the signs of his solidarity with all who have ever suffered injustice and vile, abusive treatment. He encounters a compassionate, loving disciple who wipes the vulgar spit and mocking blood from his face. On her veil, she discovers the image of his face, his gift to her and something for us to contemplate forever. What does the face of Jesus hold for me? What do I see as I look deeply into his face? Can I try to comfort the agony and pain? Can I embrace him with his face so covered with his passion? The veil I behold is a true icon of his gift of himself. This is for me. And in wonder and awe, I behold his face now wiped clean and see the depth of his suffering and solidarity with all flesh. I say what I can say to express my gratitude. I encourage you at this point to pause and to contemplate the image and the meditations. Let us pray. Lord, help me to see how you suffer in those who suffer. Through my deeds, may I be your compassion for them. Amen. Station 7. Jesus falls a second time. Even with help, Jesus stumbles and falls to the ground. In deep exhaustion, he stares at the earth beneath him. Remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. He has seen death before, and now he can feel the profound weakness of disability and disease and aging itself. There on his knees, under the weight of his cross, our Lord truly tried so hard to contemplate the torture of Calvary, and yet the pain overwhelmed his efforts. How often have I tried to persevere and failed? I contemplate Jesus brought very low. As I behold him there on the ground with all the agony taking its toll on him, I let my heart go out to him. I store up this image in my heart knowing that I will never feel alone in my suffering or any diminishment with this image of Jesus on the ground before me. This is for me. So I express the feelings in my heart. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image and the reflections. Let us pray. Lord, Help me not to be discouraged by my failures. Not trying harder is the worst failure. 
Help me to persevere. Amen. Station 8. Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. The women of Jerusalem and their children come out to comfort and thank him. They had seen his compassion and welcomed his words of healing and freedom. He had broken all kinds of social and religious conventions to connect with them. Now they are here to support him. He feels their grief. And he suffers knowing that he can't remain to help them more in this life. He knows the mystery of facing the separation of death. I look at their faces, so full of love and gratitude, of loss and fear. I contemplate what words might have passed between them. I remember all his tender, compassionate, and merciful love for me. And I place myself with those women and those children in order to support him. This is for me. So I let this scene stir up deep gratitude within me. Now I encourage you to pause at this point and to contemplate the image in the meditation. Let us pray. Lord, it is difficult to understand the needs of others when I am hurting as well. Help me to be more like you. Amen. Station 9. Jesus falls for the third time. This last fall is devastating. Jesus can barely proceed to the end. Summoning all his remaining strength and supported by his inner trust in God, Jesus collapses under the weight of the cross. His executioners look at him as a broken man, pathetic yet paying a price that he deserves. And they held him up so he could make it up the hill of crucifixion. Do I give up too easily when the going gets tough? Or do I fight on? I pause to contemplate him there on the ground. The brokenness that makes me whole. And the surrender that gives me life. I pause to experience and receive how completely he loves me. And how he digs deep to get up. He is indeed completely poured out for me. As I treasure this gifted experience, I express what is in my heart. And I encourage you at this time to pause and to contemplate the image and the reflections. Let us pray. Lord, may your strength sustain me and keep me going when I am down and depressed. Amen. Station 10. Jesus is stripped of his garments. Part of the indignity is to be crucified naked. Jesus is completely stripped of any pride. The wounds on his back are torn open again. He experiences the ultimate vulnerability of the defenseless. No shield or security protects him. As they stare at him, his eyes turn heavenward. I pause to watch the stripping. I contemplate all that has been taken from him, how he faces his death with such nakedness. I reflect upon how much of himself he has revealed to me, holding nothing back. Our Lord was stripped of all that he possessed in this world. His only consolation was his Father's love. Am I attached to anything that is keeping me from loving God more? As I look at him in his humility, I know that this is for me, and I share my feelings of gratitude. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image and the reflections. Let us pray. Lord, take away all traces of envy and pride within me. May I remain in a poor spirit so that I may be rich in you. Amen. Station 11. Jesus is nailed to the cross. 
Huge nails are hammered through his hands and feet to fix him to the cross. He is bleeding much more seriously now. As the cross is lifted up, the weight of his life hangs on those nails. Every time he struggles to pull himself up to breathe, his ability to cling to life slips away. I make myself watch the nails being driven through his flesh. And I watch his face. I contemplate the completeness of his entry into our lives. Can there be any pain or agony he would not understand? Our Lord worked miracles, walked miles, preached endlessly about his Father's will, and he was crucified. Should I expect and demand results and reward for the good that I do? This is for me, nailed to a cross to forever proclaim liberty to captives. What sorrow and gratitude fill my heart. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image and the reflections. Let us pray. Lord, as you were nailed to the cross and are so helpless, give me the wisdom to see how doing God's will is never easy. Amen. Station 12, Jesus on the cross. Before Jesus died, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. How often have I sought revenge for those who have wronged me? Should I learn to forgive like Jesus? Between two criminals, a mocking title above his head, and with only Mary and John and Mary Magdalene to support him, Jesus surrenders his last breath. Into your hands I commend my spirit. I stand there at the foot of the cross, side by side with all of humanity, and behold our salvation. I carefully watch and listen to all that is said. And then... I experience the one who gives life, pass from life into death for me. I console Mary and John and Mary, and I let them console me. This is the hour to express the deepest feelings within me. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image. Let us pray. Lord, Forgiveness is a virtue that brings healing and unity. Help me to be humble so I can more willingly forgive. Amen. Station 13. Jesus is taken down from the cross. I see his mother Mary in the depth of her sorrow. Jesus' lifeless body lies in his mother's arms. He has truly died, a profound sacrifice, complete. I behold this scene at the foot of the cross. I contemplate touching and caressing his body, my tears falling onto his torn, cold skin. I remember all his hands have touched, all who have been blessed by his warm embrace. I pause to let it soak in. He knows the mystery of death. He has fallen into God's hands. He does this for me, that I might love as I have been loved. I pour out my heart to the God of all mercies. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image and reflection. Let us pray. Lord, you have given fully without counting the cost. Please give me a heart like yours and a faith which trusts. Amen. Station 14. Jesus is laid in the tomb. They take the body of Jesus to its resting place. The huge stone over the tomb is the final sign of permanence of death. 
in this final act of surrender, who would have imagined that this tomb would soon be empty? Or that Jesus would show himself alive to his disciples? Or that they would recognize him in the breaking of bread? Oh, that our hearts might burn within us as we realize how he had to suffer and die so as to enter into his glory for us. I pause to contemplate this act of closure on his life. In solidarity with all of humanity, his body is taken to its grave. I stand for a moment outside this tomb. The final journey of his life has shown me the meaning of his gift of himself for me. This tomb represents every tomb. I stand before with fear and defeat, struggling to believe that it could ever be empty. In the fullness of faith in the risen one, given by the Holy Spirit, I express my gratitude for this way of the cross. I ask Jesus, whose hands and feet and sides still bear the signs of this journey, to grant me the graces I need to take up my cross, to be a servant of his own mission. I encourage you to pause at this point and contemplate the image and the reflections. Let us pray. Holy God, even when all seems lost, I know that you are still at work. Help me to trust your faithfulness, that your will may always be first in everything I do. In Christ I pray. Amen. We've reached the end of our journey along the Stations of the Cross, but our Holy Week journey of prayer doesn't end here. Instead, we will carry the weight of Jesus' death and dwell in what seems like an inescapable defeat. And we shall see what God has in store for us, for humanity and for all creation. Until then, may the presence of God and the commotion of the Holy Spirit keep the embers of light and life in you until the breath of resurrection fans them back into flame. Go in peace. Amen. We offer our thanks and deepest gratitude to St. John Fisher Parish and their generous sharing of their stations. And we encourage you to offer a small donation to their parish as a way of saying thanks. <laughs>